three, two, one. Michelle did finish her countdown. A powerful behemoth emerged from the distance and seized the unstoppable phoenix in its tracks. Yawns at which hour I've entered the stage with the A equipment, bewildering all others around me with my own presence. What is going on guys, NG2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade narrative Gundam C packs for Mobile Suit Gundam Narrative. Now, first of all, yes, the cycle frames color is different because obviously I painted it. Since, yeah, I kind of got tired of the red being reused over and over and over again. And to, and it is kind of a missed opportunity to give the Narrative Gundam different colored cycle frame instead of the usual red. Just because, yeah, the Unicorn Gundam has it and the countless different variants of the Unicorn has it. And yeah, I just got kind of sick of looking at the red cycle frame. But now here, the blue, it looks more refreshing and it just looks good in the show. But unfortunately, yeah, the uh, the blurb on the instruction manual spoiled the entire reason why this guy turned blue. But anyways, let's skip over that. So the narrative of the Sea Packs is a, f is a hasty project in the show. It is canonical, so it only makes sense that the cycle frame didn't really go well together, but... Despite it being a hasty project, it actually looks pretty good. Now, although it is not using the exact same cycle frame from the Unicorn Gundam, you can definitely see some resemblances. So here, down here, it is the. It looks like the chest pieces of the Unicorn Gundam that flip up during destroy mode. These, if you turn them sideways, it looks like the cycle frame from the Unicorn's chest. These could definitely fit in the shoulders. These are obvious. This is obvious. And this kind of looks like the unicorn's knee cycle frame. And yeah, the cycle frame pieces over here. And of course, the backpack. The baskers, I think they should be new looking. But, but then yeah, most of it just reassembles the unicorn way too much to call it any coincidence. But anyways, the new cycle frame looks pretty good while... It portrays the image of it being a hasty project for the narrative Gundam. So all in all, the proportions look pretty accurate and faithful to the line art. And I have to say, it just looks pretty good. Although, yeah, I do not have the stock version because I painted a cycle frame. So for the stickers, you have only the forehead camera, the back of the head, and the eyes. There's also a set of red eyes that you can put on the narrative Gundam, but you only get one eye piece, so you have to choose one or the other to put it on there. But other than that, that's literally all the stickers. But the paint job may not be the best because I think some little droplets of rainwater caught in the paint and caused the clear blue to just uh, fade out or whatever while it's drying, so. Yeah, and the weather conditions really didn't get better since then, so I really didn't bother to do a repaint. But anyways, that's it. That's the details for the Narrative Gundam. It definitely looks pretty good. So for the articulation, the head is on a plastic ball joint and a neck joint hinged in the chest. The chest itself can separate itself so it can pop the arms out. The arms are on a flip-up polycap joint so they can go up this far with the arms over here like this they can rotate and then a rotation above the elbow and a rotation at the forearm similar kind of similar to the reborn's Gundam a one joint at the elbow ball jointed wrists there is a polycap inside the core fighter block that allows the top torso to be pegged into it so it can move up and down over here and then there is a ball joint at the waist, so you can rotate and do a little bit of crunching. Front skirts can move together, side skirts are not on those universal polycasts, but they can still move. Back skirts are, as usual, a block. And then the legs, they have a mechanic that was kind of brought over from the real grades. Now, I do not know if I can execute it, but you can drop the feet down to execute some variable poses which is pretty neat 
and then the legs can go forwards, go back a little bit, yeah, still freaking block. Go outside all the way, but it kind of pushes out the polygon, so, so it goes out that far without pushing out the polygon, which is still pretty decent. Rotation at the hip, a double jointed knee, nice piping over there, and a ball joint at the ankle. And then also these thruster pieces can move and then this flap of cycle frame can move. So all in all, definitely an excellent amount of articulation. Not as articulate as some of the other kits, but it's still pretty decent for kind of like a basic Gundam. So for the accessories, you get your standard Gundam loadout. So first of all, on the backpack, we have the beam sabers, which can be pulled out, slid into the hand. And then you get two of these hard plastic beam effect parts, which, yeah, mine has a bubble in them. So it can just stick right in. And I believe these beams are compatible with the recent ones. So like the 2013 variety of beams. And then you have your Jagan's beam rifle with a green sticker for the scope. It has no moving parts, just a plain old grey plank. So it can be stored on the butt with this adapter right here. It just slides into the slit over here while the top pack slides under scope. But yeah, it kind of just moves about sometimes and just falls off. So I would definitely not allow the narrator gonna to put it on the back. But there's an option if you do not want to use the beam rifle and it also comes with a trigger finger hand I, de I deliberately separated it because I want to show you this it pegs into the palm of the trigger finger hand and then you just close it up the hand cover actually keeps the fingers on so you won't have to worry about any falling finger issues while you are posing with the beam rifle so you just swap the hands out and there you have it the beam rifle and then finally you have this awesome looking shield and under the shield yeah it should be gray while the missiles over here should be red and white and the beam cannon barrel over here should be gray but yeah it just definitely looks good from the outside so what you want to do is to, yeah, first of all, I like to just rotate the forearm to the side so that I can mount the shield onto the side. So what you want to do is just slide these two gray pieces into these grooves over here like this and then slide the entire thing down to lock it in place. Now, it's not a super secure locking mechanism, but it's definitely way better than just straight up friction. An homage to the Armored Armor DE, you can take off this but I like to just let it stay on the arm like an arm guard and then use this peg over here to peg it right into the backpack as a booster so that's definitely a good inclusion if you do not want to use the shield so that's all the accessories of the narrative Gundam C packs so for extra parts on the A plates you get the original arm armor, you get the original shoulder piece, original chest, original tops of the feet, and same thing over here. And then on the B plates, you get the original leg frames, you get the original arm frames, and same thing over here with the arm frames. And then finally on the D plate, you get the original backpack. So unfortunately, you cannot recreate a original naked narrative Gundam from these leftover parts because you do not have these, you do not have the original piece of the bottom armor over here, you do not have the original shoulder armor, you do not have the original knee armor, and yeah, that's pretty much about it. Kind of a shame, but it's expected. So for comparisons... I really do not have any model kit that is relevant to Gundam Narrative since I'm waiting for an RG Fenex and I didn't have the Shinanju Stein. So what I'm going to do is to bring in a generic Gundam, this is the American local type, just to compare the Narrative Gundam and this. And definitely the Narrative Gundam towers over the high grade Gundam. So 
Up next, let's bring in someone of its size to compare it against. Say hello to Scorpio. So that's going to be the review of the Narrative Gun C packs. I would definitely recommend this kit to you guys no matter if you're a beginner or a veteran or if you've already owned the Narrative Gun A packs. But I would recommend it especially to the people who didn't own the Narrative Gun A packs. Because first of all, this guy is cheaper. Second of all, you do not need to have your shelf space eaten up by the entire A packs just to have the Narrative Gun them. So this is a very cool alternative to add the narrative gun into your collection albeit you cannot really recreate the base naked narrative gundam out of this kit but all in all this is just a great kit and a fun build in itself because you can really unleash your creativity on the cycle frame and since this guy is using universal joints you can basically use the parts of the narrative gundam on any sort of kit unlike the old Unicorn Gundams, which are not using the Universal Standard. So this kit definitely makes customizing your Gunpla with Cycle Frame a whole lot easier. Plus, it just looks better with the Cycle Frame instead of the naked look that is the base narrative Gundam. So, no matter who you are, I would definitely recommend this kit to you guys. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more Gunpla reviews, Gunpla news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the featured channels on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next review. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.